It is made in the family of God because God puts us in families. The Sunday school is part of the family of God. And so um, at the end of the afternoon, I'll, I'll be back with you, and this will be a time when you prayerfully, if you, you may have signed it already in your Sunday school manual, but you will sign it and date it again. And you'll also sign the copy that you have, uh, the Sunday school ministry manual that you have. You'll keep one copy for yourself, and you'll give one copy to us, just as a, as a reminder that the commitment that we make we are making, uh, it's not just, okay, maybe yes, maybe no, if I'm free, but it's a commitment before the Lord. It's really, really important. So uh, as we come into our time this afternoon, let me give you just a few practical things, and then I'm going to turn it over uh, to Sister Bridget and to Sister Melrose. How to tailor your lessons to kids' learning styles. Kids experience their world through their senses and each child has a favored sense that sends more information to the brain than the other senses you know the sense you know visual auditory touching the three primary perceptual preferences or learning styles are visual auditory and kinesthetic or some call call it tactile by understanding these th three learning styles, you can create lessons that will give all your children a better chance of learning. Do you like me teaching like this? Are you? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I have a PowerPoint. I forgot about it. Okay, let's have the PowerPoint. Let's be visual. Uh, can we turn off this light? I don't know which one this is. Just, can you see? Can you see well? Because I have it with uh, black letters. Okay, all right. I won't repeat what I just said. So, how, this first lesson will be how to tailor your lessons to kids' learning style. Of course, the best way to touch the children's heart is by praying, by preparing, by reading the word, really to get ready spiritually. But it has to be also balanced with knowledge of how the children learn. This is not the Bible. This is some research that the psychologists in education have discovered. The learning styles, you can have a list of eight or ten, but there are three basic, and I will remain in these. And before I start, I just want to ask you to try to find yourself in one of these. And another thing I want to say is that we're not only one learning styles. Of course, we like to have hands-on, we like to hear, and we like to see. But sometimes we're more, more one than the others. So bear with me. All right. Second, okay, next one. So the three primary perceptions preferences of learning styles are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic, or some call it tactile, means hands-on. So by understanding these three, you can create lessons that will give all your children a better chance of learning. Right. So let's start with the visual learners. So they represent the most common learning style. Uh, the visual learners, they like to see things and need concept develop in a visual manner. That's why we have posters and we have papers with pictures. They need to see or observe things closely, recognize words by sight, remember faces, but forget names. Don't take it for only this, but generally speaking, take notes, make lists, depending their age. Uh, they have vivid imagination and they think in pictures, express emotion through facial expression. So how, here we have an example. 
Johanna is a visual learner. She is distracted by visual disorder or movement and prefers a neat, meticulous environment. This morning, it was funny because we had a craft with the children and I took two pots of pens and I just poof, put it all on the table and there was a, this little girl Hmm. It was the, a disorder. She didn't like it. She took them all back into the pot. Already I knew, okay, this little girl, she likes, she likes tidy. So each one is different. Uh, she doesn't talk at length and becomes impatient when she has to listen for a long time. While her teacher lectures, Joanna will stare, daydream, or doodle. Do you see that in your classroom? Daydreamers. I remember having to tell some students every now and then, hey, are you with us? And then the child would, okay. And I know that student was, is, is very visual. Now, how do we design our lessons? Provide pictorial or graphic representation or demonstrations. Allow the visual learners to read and look at illustration. Read is as long as they know how to read. Just a, um, a, a stop here. If you know that some children in your classroom have difficulty reading, don't ask them to read. It can embarrass them very much and they will be very reluctant. Was, you may try a few times, but if you know they go to a Chinese school and English is not their language, don't push them. You can ask them. If they say no, that's fine. If they say yes, well, go ahead and help them. Um, don't just let kids, uh, but don't just tell kids about a topic. Allow them also to read about it. Techniques, you can create and display banners using or uh, creating simple symbols, using colors, watching videos. You all have your little tablet or you have your phone. You can download uh, a song. Uh, but not for them, not for them, or a little, sometimes little video, something you can find. Putting together puzzles, making murals of story, creating journals in words or image matching games. So, generally speaking, is this, but there are more. And if you look in the material, they offer more option. So far, so good. Uh, second one. Auditory learner. Have you seen I changed colors? I went with colors when I prepared. I wanted you to see how interesting it can be when you have colors. So auditory learners, <laughs> they make up about <laughs> Make up about 20% uh, of learners, apparently. They like to hear stories. They easily follow spoken direction. They like to talk as well as listen. Do you know any children who like to talk? Yes. Yeah. They learn best by reading aloud or listening. Personally, when I study, I read aloud. I know I'm a good auditory person. They remember things they hear better than things they see, move their lips or subvocalize as they talk, uh, as they talk out situation and problem. Do you happen, do you talk to yourself sometimes when you, yeah, <laughs> maybe a little bit. They hum or they are easily distracted by sound. They remember names by auditory repetition it's, I don't know, I'm auditory, but I don't remember names. But they forget faces, they express emotions verbally through changes in tones, volumes, and pitch of voices. What's happening? Okay, so Brad is an auditory learner. He often talks to others during classes because even though he enjoys listening, he can't wait to talk. <laughs> Brad enjoys the sound of his own voice. Okay, and there are many more examples we could give. So, lesson design. Provide opportunities for kids to listen, 
to oral reading or taped presentation, ask questions in four groups, dis form group discussions to get these kids talking, um, encourage dramatic presentation, role plays, uh, always read aloud any instruction, um, yeah, and techniques. Singing, listening to music. There are always some children who will be more, they will catch more the message if they sing it. Uh, or sometimes when they work, if you could have some music in the background. Last week at school, the children were doing some art. It was quite noisy in the classroom and the, the teacher put a soft music. You should have heard that. The, the noise level just went shh, and they all work very quietly. You can try all kinds of things, but if you have quiet music sometimes when they are working, Small group discussion, choral or responsive reading, reading all together, saying the verse together, listening for key words in a hymn or reading, sound effect, I've never tried that one, during dramatic reading, rapping or chanting, they, are, they offer that, uh, these ideas in learning the verses sometimes, one-on-one -on -one interviews, Clapping, finger snapping, foot stomping, anything that has a little bit of noise. All right, so far so good? You can research more because I'm sure what I'm giving you is just a little bit, but if you have time, you can go online and, and check more of these. Kinesthetic learner, okay. Uh, kinesthetic teaching recognizes that about 80% of what we learn comes from what we do. Although not all learners are, they prefer kinesthetic, but what we do we remember. That's how I learn computer. If I learn something, my husband teaches me. If I don't do it again for a while, I forget. But when you do it, you learn. Uh, kinesthetic teaching is especially important for younger children and others whose attention is enhanced by movement. They enjoy touching or doing things, they are not attentive to visual or auditory representation, and so they seem distracted. They attack problems physically, impulsively, trying things out, touching, feeling, manipulating. When they are bored, they fidget and find reasons to move. Do you know any children like this? When happy, they jump for joy. When angry, they stomp off. So, we have Kelly here, who's a kinesthetic learner. She sits at the front of a group so she can touch the object of the lesson. I know some children like this in the classroom where I work. Some girls always sit down, they want to touch everything. In a line, Kelly is frequently told to keep your hands off you to yourself. So, how do we design our lesson? Structure real-life situation, such as field trip. We cannot really do that here. Maybe for the youth and the middlers, but for, for the other one, it's a bit hard. Maybe you can go have a walk on Hillwood Road and <laughs> look for something. <laughs> I don't know. Allow kids to make things. Give these kids object to touch or feel as they are learning about uh, what they are learning about and make lessons active by having kids play educational game or run relays. I know our rooms are small. So if of course, they cannot run in the room, but sometimes they can just stand behind their chair or you fold up the, the tables, you put them on the side, they can be in the middle. Uh, I've seen teachers in school who would use uh, the space to say, okay, if you agree for this, uh, you go on that side of the room. If you don't agree, you go the other side. You know, something that make them moving. I know we don't have much space. 
If need be, if they suggest a game, you can go in the hall. Just a little game of throwing a ball or something, whatever they su is suggested if you use that method. Um, techniques. Dance, movement, movement prayers. For the little ones, they have lots of movement for the verse, the prayer, the Children will remember that if they are more kinesthetic, although little children are kinesthetic. Prayer postures, I'm not sure what they mean. Role play, sculpting with clay, play doh. Service project if they are older, using tactile, olfactory, gustatory element, you may bring something to eat something bitter, something sweet, uh, you know, sometimes when you want to use it as an object lesson. Right. So, in conclusion, understanding the learning style can help teachers meet the need of diverse learners. Such knowledge can also help teachers see why certain learners struggle with particular activities and can even explain miss behavior. Sometimes some children will behave and we will think they are misbehaving but they are just expressing what they are. So we need to be creative to find a way to, okay, he needs to move. I, I, okay, I need, in my lesson planning I need to find a way to make certain, the children move a little bit. That child likes to hear music. So maybe you can include a little bit of everything. It's not necessary to assess the learning styles of the participant in order to be effective and just teachers, it is important to be committed to using a variety. So when you lesson, you can use different uh, method. Most of us, okay, now beware of that and I'm guilty of this, pro this problem I would say. Most of us automatically teach in ways that reflect our own preferred learning styles or in the ways we are used to being taught. So it might be helpful to take the time to identify your own style and then take effort to guard against defaulting to that style. Don't always remain with the same style. Oh, I'm auditory and uh, I like music and I like lots of noise, then I will do this all the time. If, you, if that's your case, don't be always noisy and always because you have other kids maybe who don't like. Even though I can say I'm an auditory person, when there is so much noise I cannot stand it. I, this morning I was just about to pull my my hair in the room upstairs. So some children don't like it. There was even a little girl who was just in tears and she was crying. So I identified with her. So I, I held her on my laps and I spoke to her quietly, just rubbing her arm and she was fine. I think it was very noisy for her. <laughs> it was noisy. So the likelihood is that you'll already see yourself in one of the descriptions. Have you found yourself? A little bit. You don't know. Can at least two or three people can tell me, I, I like more to be taught this way or this way? Anybody? You're all sleeping. <laughs> it's time to put the movie. Yes, Marie-Ange. Yeah. It's really a balance of, if you have a balance of those three things, yes. then usually it goes very smooth. Yes. Because it keeps them all attentive at one point. Yes. They have their moments. And uh, one thing I was reading, it's, it's, we won't really tackle discipline, maybe another time we will, but they say children have an attention span e about equal to their age plus one. So if they are five, maybe six minutes, 
So it means you have to change often, or maybe not, maybe you can stretch a bit, but don't go on and on and on. Okay, let me show you two short movies. It's learning style again, and we have a short discussion after before we go to something else. A learning style is the way in which a person sees or perceives things best and then processes or uses what has been seen. When a person has something difficult to learn, that student learns faster and enjoys learning more if his or her unique learning style is supported by the way the teacher teaches. As Christian educators, teaching to our students' learning styles can help all students get more excited about the subject and be more willing to put what they've learned into practice. Let's look at the three major learning styles. The first major learning style is the auditory style, learning from what you hear. These learners love to talk. They are always on the telephone. They love classes with discussion because they learn from listening to what others have to say. They give themselves away by moving their lips when they're reading to themselves because they're sounding out the words in their brains. Some tools to use for teaching auditory learners are verbal presentations, storytelling, discussion, question and answer sessions, videos, and reporting. The second major learning style is visual. Visual learners like pictures, charts, and object lessons. They give themselves away when they're talking to you by staring out into space while they're talking. They're looking somewhere else because they're getting a visual picture of what they're going to say. They often look at the ceiling or to the floor, then back at you before they say anything. They sometimes say, do you see what I'm saying? Some tools to use for teaching visual learners are charts, graphs, diagrams, videos, slides, and handouts. The third major learning style is kinesthetic tactile. Kinesthetic means moving around and tactile means touching. These learners have to move around, touch, taste, take apart, and put back together. They are the wiggle worms in a classroom. They can't sit still because they don't learn by sitting still. They learn better if they can use all their senses. Everything in public and Christian education is designed for kids to sit still and listen. But there are some who really have trouble learning that way. They learn best when they can move around. Some tools to use for teaching kinesthetic tactile learners are group exercises, simulations, role playing, group projects, and practice. Most preschoolers are kinesthetic tactile learners. Their nature is to touch things. You know if toddlers pick something up, the first thing they want to do is put it in their mouths. That's the way they explore their world, by moving, touching and tasting. Most elementary children are visual learners. They're into reading, writing, learning the alphabet, and learning words. You see charts and lots of visuals in their classrooms. First through sixth graders are very visual. They're still going through a little kinesthetic tactile, but they're still mostly visual. Most teenagers are auditory learners. They learn from what they hear. They like to talk for hours on the phone. That's the way they're taking in their world. That's why music is such a big deal to them. They always have their cell phones. 
They're creating their worldview based on what they're hearing. The reason I put the video is because I wanted you to see the difference. I started in the beginning, you remember, I just read to you. Maybe some of you said, oh, it's going to be boring. I don't know, maybe not. But I could have lectured you. But then I use another visual, which is the PowerPoint. And now I use the movies. Just for you to realize there are different approach. Which one did you prefer? Don't be shy to say it's the movie. I won't be offended. They are complimentary. Yeah. So you realize how the approach can be different. Before I go to the next section of our um, teaching this afternoon, I want to mention something I've read. And it said that most of the teaching approach that we are using caters better to girls. And, and be careful. Think about the boys who are in your classroom because a lot of what we do is, you know, we use the fingers to draw art. And I remember through the years how boys were not good, not as good, because the development of the fine motor skills is slower for the boys than the girls. The boys will become athletic better, uh, you know, I mean faster normally. Uh, than the girls. The girls, don't compare the boys and the girls in the classroom because they are different. And make sure you have something that will cater to them, that make them move, because little boys often move a little bit more than girls. It's just generally spe speaking, because I know girls who move a lot. But still, so what the article said is if you're not careful you're sending the message to boys that Sunday school is only for girls because they are bored or it's not moving enough for them so just just think about that when you do the, your teaching think about the boys okay the second section for this afternoon is um, we will have a David Sikok orientation. I know some of you have been teaching for a long time, and I'm sorry. Uh, you already know all the material, but some of you are new, and I don't know. We, we haven't had training for years. So I would like to go over the lessons. I will just choose three, three age group. So I will start with the early elementary, if you can go to the Next, 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 next. OK. When you prepare for teaching, uh, this part, to me, is uh, one of the most important. It introduces what you're going to talk about. Does this work? Yeah. So here, you have your, OK, the scriptures, the focus, and the memory verse. It's, to me, it's very important. I, I always start from there. And I read, OK, what will I have to do? Bible story, mm -hmm, OK. This is the, what we'll do. And this part is very important because it's kind of a, um, what you're going to talk about. But the teaching is more for adults. It's for you to understand. Uh, I must tell you, when you teach, try to go beyond and, be, and before. Don't just read these scriptures, but try to understand the context. But this is a good, a good start. It's a good summary of what you're going to teach. Next slide. Uh, this one, teacher's devotional, this also is a very important one, even though you don't span a long time. Take a time to read it because it's talking to you before it, you're going to teach the children. This part is very important because it gives a lot of uh, educational psychology, how to understand kids of that age. I really like to read this part. 
Here it's early elementary student. Uh, these we don't have much time. Sometimes uh, you can you can either use this instead of another activity, but and the early elementary, one thing I know is you have a lot, a lot of material. You cannot do everything, but next. So, you here you have the Bible readiness, the link, and you have your activity, the sharing time. It's a preparation. What are we in step one? Do you remember? Motivators. Next one. And then we go to the Bible story. Uh, the story. Learn your story. Uh, it's better if you learn it well and tell it in your own words than just read it. It's better. Try to put drama in your story. Uh, if it's a long story, maybe sometimes you can refer to it. And even if you miss a detail, it's okay. But try to know it enough to tell it. Next one. So you have the review. Here you have many questions. But sometimes if a question comes to your mind that is not there, go ahead. And you don't have to ask all these questions. Uh, here there are a lot of review activity. And memory verse practice, they make it quite kinesthetic uh, for the little ones. They chant, they do some motion, they do all kinds of ways to remember. Sometimes it's visual also. But uh, I've seen a lot of kinesthetic ways to remember. Clap hands, or one after the other, you know. For the little ones, I think it helps them. Next one. Now, the Bible activity. Of course, we don't have time to do everything. If you are organized enough, maybe you can prepare to and ask children to choose. Here we have storytelling and verse practice so the do you remember what we are in the third one second one we were an instructor we are motivator instructor what are we here we're a coach you remember they learn to practice here so here you have my feeling books it's quite visual tossing Game, bean bags and ball or roll and stuff sucks. Which one would this be? Visual, auditory, kinesthetic. Kinesthetic. So it said sit in a circle and then they explain to you. And then the story telling and practice, they can do it themselves. They put it in order, kind of a puzzle thing. What is it more? Visual. Yeah, so we have two visual, and you have to make it, take it. Okay, next one. And the Bible response. What, what, what are we in the last part? Do you remember? Encourager. Encourager, right? Okay, here they offer uh, a way that they will go home with something. So the little ones, most of the time, they go home with a paper. The, so you review a little bit, and then what are you going to do with your reminder? So it's kind of a reminder of what they have learned. Maybe they have here, it seems like they have used that part of the make it, take it. And here it says extra time activity. Sometimes you, would, you might prefer to do this one instead of that one. This one is the CD the song. Sometimes you can just sing the song. They will go home with the song in their head and you pray. One thing you can do to the little kids and even to older kids, you can ask them what did you learn today? It will give you uh, an indication if they got something. But mainly focus on what we saw in the first page. Let's go to another 
just go a little bit below I think it's the make it take it no okay see these are the activities that were here and the make it take it so if you always have some coloring many boys might get bored but the girls might like it so maybe you can have two activity some girls are always some boys too but some are always happy to color but some maybe find it boring so try to vary okay let's go to um, elementary not the early elementary I will just touch three because it's kind of long I just want you to realize the activity that are different you remember last week last time we talked about different age capacity okay let's go to slide three I would say or four okay so here it's God's plan and creation so again you read connect with the experience the story of creation you have the verse the focus what is the focus God's plan and creation can be trusted so the whole lesson is always come back to it uh, so you review you read understanding the Bible and here they make you read it, whatever you're going to teach next slide when teaching the Bible to elementary students very useful I really like these teachers devotional early bird option you can if you have time you can do some next next slide okay this Bible readiness so here they suggest <laughs> that before you enter the classroom you put everything upside down in the classroom and then the children come and everything is untidy and then you start this way why do you think our room is mixed up so which learning style did we hit when doing this visual maybe kinesthetic as well sometimes it can be mixed because they want to show the children in that lesson that everything did not come with a big bang like poof and then there was but God can be trusted and there is an order and all that next one so you have the teaching here they suggest that you use the discovery you know the discovery yeah next one and the review so you have the questions can discuss the my, my memory verse see group one group two group one group two is it's kind of a a chanting another way to learn the verse next one spider web uh, create a collage creation match okay so here is they use yarn to be all mixed up you know and to understand the the spider web or here a collage which is hard sometimes they suggest to use uh, magazines but if you can download pictures from Google sometimes you can print make a document print and they can cut them and glue or here a creation match they had, it's a review so no auditory here a bit of kinesthetic uh, he, and a bit of visual next one so the Bible responds the, uh, it's it always come back to we can trust God so how can we because all the time it talked to you how to trust God because we can trust him because in creation he did everything perfect so how can they trust God do they have anything hard tough in their life that they can trust God with it's always come back to them life application if you have children who say I know that activity I know that story you may tell them it's it's uh, uh, it's connecting to their own life uh, can you go back a couple 
example slide. One thing I want to, uh, the, the one before, okay. At the, I'm sorry, we transferred a PDF into PowerPoint and it didn't quite fit, but at the end of each step, you have a transition to keep always the same focus. Next one, next one also. And next. Okay, see at the end here, you have a transition. I oh, know this one doesn't have. Next one. Also, okay. It, because in the higher level, we have more transition than in the lower level. Okay. Next uh, would be middlers, if you could go to the middlers. Middlers are older, so you will see the activities will be more intellectual, they are more capable. So R again, you're an awesome God. So it's uh, Genesis again, same scriptures, they have more. Our God is an awesome God. This part, you have the memory verse and understanding the Bible. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but I want you to realize that each part of the book is important. Next one. So the devotion and how to teach children that age, classroom tips, when teaching the Bible to middle schoolers. This is, this is very good. See, young adolescents to, seems to relish uh, creative expression. I love to read these, and we always gain at reading them. Now, step one. So step one, you have your um, activity. Now, do you see this here? Real life download that you don't see it, right? And the upper elementary, middlers, and high school. You go online, you type, I'm sorry, I didn't get it ready. Maybe during, we will have an activity, and during the activity, I will go online and show to you. There is an option that you can choose for step one and four. Um, it's called Real Life Downloaded, and it's Another option that you can choose to start and end, and they often uh, have a video, or it's, it's really uh, some news. Sometimes it doesn't really cater to us because sometimes it's really American in the sense that it's something ha happening in the U.S. because our material is coming from the U.S. But sometimes it's very relevant for us too, even if we're not American children. and. Sometimes I use it, sometimes I don't, but it's just for step one and four, which I will show you later, how to access it. And you can have a look, and you can say, oh, I like it, I will take it. If you have a tablet, or if you want to ask to have a laptop and use it, or the TV, I don't know how you what kind of technology skills you have, but if you want to have a go, sometimes it's an interview, sometimes it's a song, sometimes it's a, a short movie. So all, all this is offered to you every week for your lesson, step one and four. Okay, so at the end, after you've prepared your first step, you can just go down to the transition. We've seen things that we consider awesome, and then you go to the reading, step, uh, step two. So in the mid, middle, middlers, they have the rock. They have the rock. So you can use it to read, or if you want them to use the Bible, it's up to you as well. You can use the Bible. Um, next one. So this is in the rock. And you have some questions. Um, and you have other questions here. So it's up to you to gauge your time and see what's the most important, how the Lord leads you. Because if you do everything that is 
suggested you will run out of time but make sure you touch base and keep focu the focus next one so at the end of the previous one there was again a trans or kind of a close-up of what you've talked about now here see in today's lesson we've seen that God see again there is a transition here you don't have to read it but keep in mind from one part to the other keep a, a continuum a word collage the big question which is a poster jumping for joy so so here it would be more what jumping for joy kinesthetic the big question has to do with the poster I write a poem letter or a song about God and his awesome creation what would this be I don't know that's why I told you it, when you go further in the learning styles you go deeper and they describe even more which I didn't want to go deeper but this one could be a bit kinesthetic and visual and a word collage here you can yeah it's the big question write cut out mount your poster words so they, they can create words to make a poster so at the very end you encourage to appreciate God God's awesome creation so what they suggest uh, they ask you to look on the poster and you write ideas on the board so this will be a brainstorming thing which can be auditory maybe some students will be encouraged by this you can have a song uh, you can have a prayer the memory verse is less emphasized as you go into the higher level but I still try to make sure we read it at least uh, and that's it so the reason I went over that is that now we will have a session of hands-on I have one two three four five. I have six level of of the lesson of a lesson of this coming quarter so I would like you to separate in six groups and we will tell you what to do after that you don't have to person and you know they would even laugh at your so that at least it, you create something with them and, they, and for them they would really appreciate you trying um, uh, another types of visual aids that we could do is we could um, what do you call it? Uh, make a costume or make uh, like a headdress if it's going to be a feral when you are telling a story so so that um, they would look at you and that would create an interest and one thing that we've seen um, during the English camp was um, when they were telling the story of Esther they have like a wooden mask and it has like a girl's face and she's the one who's telling the story but it's a popsicle and then like a mask so it, it really creates um, interest with the children the next one is audience interaction so we need to ask them question and um, we have to let them do huh what am I doing oh okay um, so uh, this one you know audience interaction for example um, I'm gonna give you examples about the English camp so that you'll have an idea I know that you have lots of ideas but yeah anyways um, one example that we do is when we did the story of um, Jesus calming the sea so we ask one part as the thunder and the other part as lightning so we would just ask them to so that they would um, feel that they are part of the story uh, the next one 
uh, we could use sound effects. Uh, some of you are really good with sound effects. You could do clap or, you know, the horses, the chariots. You do your feet. Um, yes, use that. Whistle if you can. So use sound effects because for the children, like what I told you, know your students, know them, and know their uh, learning abilities, if they are visual, kinesthetic, and um, telling a story, it could be all three, auditory, kinesthetic, and um, auditory, okay? Another is mime, so that is an example as well. Um, next is application. This is always um, something that we would want the children to take home the application of our story because it's not just a story it's what we are doing is transforming lives and that is um, like what Jesus has said um, in Matthew 20 28 28 um, like go therefore um, baptize and teach them the commandments so we would want we our role is for them to know God and we would want what we have taught them to be applied in their da daily lives so with this the application it could be questions like um, what the teacher has told um, Tim Bradley said that you know um, what is it I forgot so anyways <laughs> Ah, okay. So, um, and one thing that we could do is um, we have to tell them that whether our story is a true story or not a true story. And for them, if it's a true story, like what the Bible, um, like the Bible, it's a true story. And when we, I could relate it all to um, English camp, when we told them that this is a story about the Jews and this is a true story and all of them were like <gasps> and you could see that um, it's not just a made-up story and this helps them um, think and understand and grasp what we um, teach them so um, another is practice it's like evangelism um, for a lot of you um, many of you uh, have done evangelism and sometimes you tend to you need to memorize things but it's the same thing storytelling doesn't come easily on many on some people but you can enhance it you need to practice when we do evangelism when I practice I would um, think that I am telling it to someone and I'm like conversing with myself so it's the same as storytelling. Tell it to yourself and imagine that you are telling it to the children. And in your practice, you already do your tones. You think of a way of like good words to say, um, to give an example. And not just you know reading the Bible story, but giving more, um, what do you call this? More light on like how you create uh, the story um, yes by looking at it at a different angle okay. and the last one but mm, the most important one is pray for God's anointing because this is one thing that uh, it's a ministry and this is um, something that um, we could not we could not do but on our own because when they are out um, we don't know who they talk to we don't know how their situation is in their home so it's more of like we would want them to experience the love of God personally and this is evangelism 101 
Sunday school. It's Evangelism 101 because we tell them, we share to them the good news. We teach them about the laws of God. We teach them about the love of God. So, um, like what I told you last time, you have to know your Bible. You have to know the students and show them uh, uh, how to show them, you know, your love and the Father's love. And you have to know the subject. So, I'm not going to do questions. Should I do that? <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Um, sometimes it's the book. There are some people that are visual. And for me, the book, it's a lot of words. And it doesn't help me. So what I would do, and it's more of like do a bird's eye view of the step one, two, three, and four. And that helps me relate step one, two, three, and four. Because sometimes when we do, well, maybe, or maybe just me, when I do step one, I just look at it and it sometimes I could not relate it to the step two. Although, you know, you could, it, it has everything in there. But when you do a lesson planning, it would be, it's easier for you to be able to see the bird's eye view why are the questions um, uh, in this? Uh, okay, yes. Anyways, first, <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just like talking like the whole day, and it's uh, okay. <laughs> I have a sample lesson plan that I'm going to give it to you later. Uh, First, when you do a lesson plan is first, like what he said, what is the objective? What is the aim of um, the story? What would you want to come up with? And the second one is the materials. What would you need? So write it down, put it in a paper, just like this, so that you have a visual and it's easier for you to grasp and you don't have to have all all the words because for me it's so and then um, this one it has introduction it's like the step one like how can you introduce and um, how can you plan to begin your lesson then the next is body like what are the main points of the lesson you could have questions like what when where it could be factual. Some children, like, I to, like they said, um, they are more auditory. And there are some children that they need facts. They are more, they learn more with facts, with, uh, yeah. So it's also good. Use your phone, use your tablet, Google, and research. Because that is the best thing. But our first focus first is, you know, use the Bible. The resources are just secondary. Next is application. So how, how would you want them to apply it in their lives? And um, you could have, like, a lot of questions relating to it. It could be the step three. Is it a step three? Of, um, so... Conclusion, step three, how I plan to close, and then participation. It's more of like how do you encourage your children to do, um, to do, to do what the lesson says. And then, we don't have a lot of time. Okay, we just wanted to, because we are going to do the manual, we just, and sign our commitment. Have you read your manual? Yes. yes. First, uh, what are the things that you remember about what we expect of the teachers and the assistant? 
Okay, know the Bible. Per personal relationship, yes. What else? Don't just prepare on Saturday, but use the whole week leading up to you. Yes. Anything else? Be open to suggestions. Be committed. Yes. Sometimes we are very sensitive. Me, I am sensitive in other parts. In other parts, not really. So, but this is something that we have to be um, open. We have to be open to suggestions because this is a ministry and we would want um, us to be trained and to know more and to be able to lead the children. Okay, the next one is attendance. This is something that we, now because I'm in the worship, I'm early, but before I was not. It says here that we have to arrive at 9 o'clock so that we could have a corporate prayer. It's always different to sit down and pray and get quiet before you start. If you haven't read the manual, read the manual. And if you haven't, come on guys. There's no excuse for not reading the manual unless I haven't received it yet and you've just gotten it. But read it and go over it. Um, if it's not, if it weren't imp important, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify what Melrose was doing because you all have eyes and I know that you can read. So, um, but do go over it and look over it. It puts in concise form the things that we really believe are important for the Sunday school to work. That's, that's the main thing. That's the main thing. So would you please, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to change what we asked Melrose to do to go, through the, to go through the manual. But please do, go through it and pray through it as well and look at it. And it will, as you look at it and as you study it, it will help you see this is how the Sunday school flows together smoothly. This is how it works. Because if we look at it and we think, well, I don't care, that doesn't really matter, then things begin to fall down. So we've put it together in this way so that the Sunday school will flow well, so that um, communication will work. As you can see in the last week and this week, Sister Bridget and Melrose have taken on the training and sort of a leadership role for the overall Sunday school. But I want to tell you something for Pastor Renee and for me as your pastors. What we want to say is this. At the present time, we do not have a Sunday school leader or director as most churches do. Almost all churches have that. And I, I do believe this is something that we need or we need to pray about. God, is there another way we can do it at Lighthouse? And it may be that God is speaking to some of you to take greater responsibility in, the, in these areas. Or maybe at Lighthouse we do it in a different way. And we have a structure within our groups where there's a group responsibility, which is why it's so important what Melrose has just shared. Um, but we, we really appreciate that Bridget and Melrose have taken on extra responsibilities these two weeks. Um, they have spent hours and hours and hours outside of the class to prepare, to help you prepare both last Sunday and this Sunday, this Sunday so that you'll be a better Sunday school teacher as well. Um, and so what we ask from you is that you do take time to look over it, read through it. If you have a question, come to us, talk to us about it. To our knowledge, we're doing it this way because we think this is the way that will work the best. If you feel that the Lord is calling you to greater responsibility in some way in the Sunday school, we're going to ask you this. Would you come to us and say, I think the Lord is asking greater responsibility of me. You just come to, come to Pastor Renee or come to me. And we'll pray with you about it and we'll say, okay, God, then what's the next step? But this is a need and we don't want to put it on Sister Bridget. Sister Bridget's also working full time in addition to, to, to this and Melrose also has a lot of responsibilities already. But honestly, brothers and sisters, I believe that the Lord gives giftings throughout the church, not just to two or three people so that his church will function properly. So we ask for you to pray about this because it is, it is something, it's a need. And if there's another way of doing it, we want to know that as well. Um, so be, pl be praying about it, but do go through it and look through. Um, if you have not read through this recently, then you are not ready for the concerning your commitment, okay? 
And if you've not read it yet, we do not want you to sign this sheet that we're going to give you right now. But if you have read it, then you should have thought about it and prayed about it already. Yes? Yes. Okay. So, are you copying? Are you filming me still, Pastor? I'm sorry. Okay. What we're going to do now is this. Would you take one of these sheets, please? Do you mind if I just look over? Yes. You're so happy, right? Okay. Okay. Um, take one of these sheets, and the sheet that you're receiving now is actually the sheet that's on the last page of your Sunday school uh, of your Sunday school ministry manual, the children's and the youth ministry manual. And what we're going to ask you is to look at that, and we want to underline as you get that. Let me underline what I know Bridget has said and what Melrose has said. Sunday morning, 20 minutes in the morning to prepare for students and to prepare for children will never be enough. Can you entertain them? Yes. Can you keep them happy and doing things? Yes, you can. But we'll never be able to touch their hearts for God if we have not been praying throughout the week, if we've not been reading through it. There are all sorts of ideas in the, in the uh, Sunday school materials. There are all sorts of things in the Sunday school materials. But if you haven't put time into it and preparation into it, then there will be no creativity. And I'll tell you what happens. When we don't put time and preparation and prayer, the first thing that you lose is creativity in the classroom. And I know that from being a teacher for years and years and years. Is that true, Sister Bridget? Creativity, just it goes. What you will do is you'll grab your lesson and you'll just do exactly what it says. And the lessons are great. But God has given us minds and imaginations so that we might respond to the children in our classroom with creativity and with imagination. And we want to use the gifts that God has given us. So we challenge you, if you are going to be involved in Sunday school and in youth ministry in any way, the commitment that goes with that is a commitment throughout the week to pray and prepare. Keep at it. Keep at it. Get a picture of every student in your class. Be praying for them daily. Not just, oh, I teach this week, so I'll pray a few minutes. But daily. And watch the difference. If you've got some kids in your class that are a little bit tough, by the way, I think Lighthouse has great kids. I really, wonderful kids, wonderful kids. But we know sometimes some children are a little more difficult to deal with than others. Sometimes there are times maybe there's, maybe there is strife or chaos at home and you don't know it, but it will show out in the child on Sunday morning. But if you will be bringing your ch these children before the throne of God and praying for them, you will see the difference that God will make in their hearts and lives. So we challenge you, we urge you, and we just say to you, flat out, for sure, if you want to be involved in Sunday school and youth, then preparation, personal preparation and prayer is, goes with it. It's part of it. And if you're not willing to do that, we don't want to lose anybody, but if you're not willing to do that, this is not the ministry for you, okay? And we're not trying to get rid of anybody, but it's not the ministry for you if prayer and preparation throughout the week are not part of it. If you think, well, I can do it on Sunday morning, no problem, it's little kids, then Sunday school ministry is not the ministry for you because it does take ministry and prayer throughout the week. So, all of that is in there in much more eloquent form than I just said, okay? But take it, read through it, pray through it, Turn off that phone, whosoever it is. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Nita. <laughs> okay. You know, did we tell you in China, in one of the churches, they had a tithe box for telephones? Yes. And they were serious. If it rang, in it goes. We'd die, wouldn't we? So, take this sheet. All serious aside, we close. Thank you for your time this afternoon. We know some of you have not yet eaten. We understand. How many of you not yet eaten your lunch? <laughs> Sister Bridget, you can't afford that. You need your lunch. Some of us, Pastor Renee as well, and some of us as well. We know, we thank you for the time. We know you're tired. It's been a long day. But we thank you for giving this time. And we know your brains are a little bit tired now. But we know that the Lord can refresh your minds and bring it to you. And so what we're going to do now is this. You've got that sheet. Don't fold it up and don't put it away. Take two minutes right now. If you've not yet read the manual, 
please do not sign that paper and turn it in. If you've read the manual, it's in your heart, take a minute or two right now, read through that commitment, that covenant commitment, you're making it to God, you're making it in the Christian family, and when you've read through it, sign it, date it, and then what you're going to do is this. What do we do at the altar? We bring our sacrifices and our gifts to the Lord. So when you're ready, you read through it, sign it. Let's start over doing a copy. You don't have a copy yet? Where are they? I think Melrose wants to Melrose wants to make some. I was being very eloquent here. Pa pass it around. She's making more right now. Okay. If you haven't yet received, so if you've not read through the manual, and we're not trying to put you on the spot at this point, but if you've not read through the manual, please don't do it today because you need to know really what you're covenanting to do, what you're committing to do. If you've read through it and you're ready, look at it, read it, sign it, date it, and then without a lot of talking or chatter or whatever, just come up and put it here on this altar and just say, Lord, I give this to you. This my commitment is before you.